Imagine you are abandoned by everyone you love, losing both your parents since birth because your father went out to get the milk and never came back, and this time your mother followed along with your dad, and left you out to rot in the cold with some random family and you have to fend all on your own. But all this bad luck turns into a positive, when you get hit by Mr. Truck Coon, and then suddenly, other people's negative emotions will unlock you a crazy overpowered godlike abilities, which you can use to become a the most powerful and wealthiest student in the academy. But everyone thinks you're weak. At the beginning, we see a poor helpless woman, holding her newborn baby, whose name is Lu Shu. She's all on her own and struggling to walk and also seems to be running away from some group of men who were trying to chase her. So she keeps on running until she sits down in a nearby apartment building. She starts singing to Lu Shu, and eventually a woman steps outside, called Lin, and invites her and the baby inside to get warm. The mother agrees but tells the woman that she needs to buy Lu Shu some milk from the shop and as soon as Lin was holding the baby, the mother dipped out as fast as she could, and didn't look back. She told Lin to keep the baby as he smells like dog shit, and he was the worst mistake of her life. After that, Lin was in shock that she just left her baby, but she did notice a pretty strange walnut necklace around Lu Shu. The story then takes us 18 years later and here, we see Lu Shu all grown up as a Giga Chat high school student who is taking some time out of his day to spend with his adoptive sister, named Lu Xiaoyu, and he treats her to some caramelized treats at a nearby festival. But his sister Xiaoyu nearly makes our boy Lu Shu go bankrupt, as these treats are so overly expensive but he still wants to be the best big brother he can be and buys the delicious snacks for them to share. But he warns Lu Xiaoyu that they cannot do anything else at the festival now as they are so poor. Right then, Lu hears some random people talking about the magician's performance at the festival who are performing all kinds of tricks, emitting flames right out of the palm of their hands, and also a guy who was carrying things that weigh over 2,000 kilograms in weight, which would normally be impossible for a regular human being to do. The people talking are even using the words superheroes and magical powers, which Lu Xu overheard them say, and he starts thinking about what they are saying, as recently. More and more news about these so-called magic users and beings with unique abilities have been popping up a lot lately, but nobody actually knows if it's true. Right then, Xiaoyu asks Lu to watch the magician who's currently performing a fiery show. However, they can't see what's happening so Lu brings his sister Xiaoyu to the front of the crowd, and here they get to see the man performing up close. While looking at the man, Lu Xu realizes that this guy is not performing a regular magic trick, and that he's actually creating natural fire powers at his own will, and manipulating fire in his own way. But everyone in the crowd thinks he's just a normal human being doing a magic trick. After a few minutes, the magician's fire somehow connected with Lu Xu and he starts having a vision of a sword and after the walnut pendant necklace that was left behind from his mother started to glow up. But Lu Xu thinks nothing of it at first, and continues watching the fantastic spectacle, and the guy finishes the show off with an incredible presentation of fireworks made with his superpowers. After the show ends, his sister asks Lu Xu if they can also learn these tricks, and maybe then they can earn money just like the other performers. But Lu Xu tells his sister that these are impossible to learn, since they are different beings who have something in them that's different to them. But Xiaoyu begs Lu Xu to at least see the magician backstage and that's when Lu Xu takes her to have a look and they both sneak into the backstage area. However upon getting there, they witness a group of black suited individuals who look like some pretty serious looking fellows, and they blast the performer in the face with a tranquilizer dart and put his ass to sleep as quick as they could. After, they hear Lu Xu's annoying sister as she can't keep her mouth shut for two seconds, and after the leader of the group named Zai Fei asks Lu Xu what the hell he's doing creeping around back here, but Lu Xu apologizes and tells them they were only looking for the bathroom. But Sai Fei tells Lu Xu not to worry as they are police officers arresting this magician. But Lu Xu knew they was lying because Lu Xu actually has enough brain cells to understand what's going on here, and is not some brain dead NPC. However, Sai Fei thinks Lu Xu can be played like a fool. After saying his piece, the gang of thugs tell them the bathroom is in the other direction so they leave. After that, Lu Xu wonders if these people are somehow going after these enhanced humans with special abilities and right then they bump into another guy called Jai Wei, who was randomly waiting for Lu Xu to come outside as he was also interested on what happens backstage. However Lu Xu completely blanks him and walks away, not saying a word to him which shocks Jai Wei. After the two of them arrive back home and meet their aunt Lin who was preparing some medicine for her husband. And Lu Xu asks if the old man is doing well. But Lin informs him that he's on his last remaining days and the time for him will come soon. 
After, Lu Xu takes Xiaoyu and starts to prepare food but Xiaoyu doesn't want anything but cookies and snacks but Lu Xu can't afford any Pokemane cookies as he's such a broke boy, and then decides to go outside to buy them some instant noodles instead. While Lu Xu heads outside, he stumbles across the old orphanage where he met Xiaoyu, and starts to have flashbacks of when they were younger, and his sister was the only person in the orphanage who cared about him, and tried cheering him up whenever she could and also helped him from the bullies. Lu Xu was so immersed in this flashback that he didn't see the traffic lights turn green again. And this is when the almighty antagonist of every isekai to ever exist comes into the Donga's universe and puts my boy to sleep. However, Truck Kun's plan didn't work as intended, as Lu Xu was wearing the walnut pendant and his death activated the necklace to glow up and it starts to fully regenerate his entire body, and my dude instantly wakes up again and he starts asking himself how he was just able to survive such a tragic incident, and he gets up like a zombie exorcist coming up out of a grave and decides to troll the truck driver. He starts asking him to pay up, and Lu Xu wants compensation for him being hit but the driver doesn't get how he's even still alive, and is walking about, and he gets insanely spooked out, so broski dipped out faster than Lu Xu's mom did. But Lu Xu did notice some yellow digits popping up above the guy's head. After, Lu Xu decides to head back home but not before buying his sister's favorite instant noodles. But every time he sees someone, they are super scared of seeing some half-dead dude wandering around and these emotions give Lu Xu yellow points, but he still doesn't even know why this is happening. When Lu Xu gets back home, he takes a shower and after looking into the mirror he is surprised to see that he has no injuries or marks and feels completely fine. In addition to that, he finds a glowing seal lit up in the palm of his hand, and seems to be a golden leaf-shaped seal, which he finds pretty odd, but he wonders if he has somehow gained one of these superpowers that people are talking about on the news recently. And while talking into his hand, and using words like power, it activates the golden seal. And this brings up a godlike leveling up system. And Lu Xu gets shocked, but scared at the same time as it starts talking to Lu Xu like he's some kind of god. Lu Xu reads the hologram and realizes that it uses points as a leveling system, and it's only assigned to him. And he remembers the people who were scared of him while he was walking home and thinks that it must be these negative emotions that give him points. After, Lu Xu thinks about it and starts to feel bad for making these innocent people feel scared or frightened. But then he remembers, those people always mock him and like to make jokes that he's just a poor and weak boy. So he starts laughing and completely loses his mind, calling himself the next demon lord of the world as negative emotions is what he must obtain to grow as strong as he can be. He notices different modes on the system, and chooses the roulette wheel, and spins it to gain a prize, but he doesn't have enough points to spin the high reward levels to get awesome items and powers, so he spins the lowest rank, with the few points he has right now, and he gains a juicy ripe apple straight from the god system. After tasting the apple, it gives him a big surge of energy, making him feel better than ever before. However he quickly uses up all his points, and when the roulette was over, the system gave Lu Xu some kind of sacred scroll, and this sends Lu Xu into another dimension, and he ends up in his place called the Star Plane, which is his own secret dimension where he can fully immerse himself and upgrade his abilities, but he still has communication with everyone on Earth, and can even talk with his sister while up in the Star Plane. Here he tests out more things and also finds it funny when his sister's emotions gain him points. After checking the news it states that a big fire was in the area, and Lu Xu realizes it's close to where he lives so he heads outside to take a look. Lu Xu climbs on top of the roof to see what's going on but to his surprise, Zai Fei and the group of black-suited men are seen running away on top of the roofs and when Lu Xu sees them he makes a noise and this makes Zai Fei stop and look around. To avoid any noise garnering their attention, Xu immediately ducks down and holds his mouth. But since Xu was a failure at everything in life, he also fails at hiding. After getting busted by the men in black, Xu once again generates a stupid excuse and he tells the men in black that he was on the roof collecting dried radish. Being knuckleheads themselves, the men in black believe Xu when they move ahead. Relieved, Xu rushes into his house only to find Xiao Yu filled with questions about who he was talking to on the roof. While Xiao Yu was annoying Xu with questions, Xu and Xiao Yu both got distracted by a body falling right outside their house. To investigate, Xu tells Xiao Yu to stay inside the house while he checks up on the man. 
While outside, Shu starts to feel his magic credit score going up due to Xiao Yu's negative emotions since she couldn't contain herself inside the house. Intrigued, Xiao Yu heads out the house and joins her brother as they both check up on the unconscious dude who turned out to be the performer from before. Whilst checking up on the dude, Shu tells Xiao Yu to call the ambulance but he immediately scraps the idea since the ambulance costs money. Hearing Shu's pathetic and greedy state, the dude lying down starts to generate chunks of magic points for Shu. Seeing his magic credit score boost up, Shu realizes that the dude was acting to be unconscious and hence Shu's greediness once again reignites. To gain massive stonks in his credit score, Shu decided to tease the dude in order to pump his negative emotions. Being an expert at being a prick, Shu finally brings the dude to his breaking point as the dude finally uses his fire powers in order to burn Shu into ashes. However, due to some reason, Shu is able to withstand the fire attack which bums out the dude even more and causes Shu's credit score to grow. After much back and forth, Shu lets the dude go and returns back to his room. With the magic credits earned, Shu reopens the weird interface and buys a celestial fruit. Upon eating it, a light from the heavens strikes Shu and gives him the ability to lift heavy things. Hungry for more points, Shu decides to roast people on his school's Chinese Discord server. Some of his classmates were gossiping about the arson incident, speculating that an awakener might have caused it. Unnatural incidents were on the rise and there were no explanations for such incidents. Hence, there were speculations about people called awakeners who had such supernatural abilities and were supposedly hiding amidst common people. The next morning, Shu heads out to sell boiled eggs, but is soon mocked by his fellow schoolmates. Shu tricks one of his classmates, Liu Li, into buying the whole egg stock. To get back to Shu, Liu Li decides to pay Shu using his VIP card while knowing that Shu did not have a card scanner. Overseeing this, the school baddie, Ka Qingxi, pays money on behalf of Liu Li, expecting to be repaid later. Liu Li, having his plan backfired, leaves Shu's stall in anger as he couldn't handle the violation. While at school, Shu overhears his classmates discussing Awakeness. He finds out that there are six ranks, rank F, which he currently holds, is stronger than regular humans but is still the lowest among Awakeness. Rank E consists of Awakeness with elemental abilities, rank D can avoid weapons, while rank C can counter and avoid human weapons. Rank B can harness power from nature, and finally, rank A can resonate deeply with nature. Advancing in ranks can occur through natural awakening and practice, or through gradual improvement over time. Suddenly, another student barges into the classroom and informs the whole class about Li Kai's sudden awakening. Shu rushes outside of his class where he learns from his classmate, Yi Ling Ling, that Li Kai had awakened after he was asked to provide a blood sample. Apparently Li Kai refused to comply and started to fight with the teacher. Hearing the commotion, Shu heads to the roof where the fight was still ongoing. On his way, Shu passes by the baddie from before, Ka King Shi, and he senses awakened powers from her. On the roof, Shu finds Li Kai holding the teacher at the edge of the roof. The principal, who is a Hitler look-alike, tries to reason with Li Kai but to no avail. To earn points at the moment, Shu tries to piss off the crowd by making Li Kai guilty of laws that he made up himself. The whole crowd is dumbfounded as Shu Goodman rests his case by making Li Kai guilty of murder using his negative knowledge and law. As Li Kai was distracted by Shu's random laws, the men in black capitalize on their opportunity, and they immobilize Li Kai while he was trying his best to understand Shu's nonsense. As the things calmed down, Shu returned to class only to realize that two medical professionals were asking for the whole class's blood sample in order to find the awakeners among them. After the blood draw, Shu returns home only to find the dude with suspenders from earlier on his way. Shu ignores him once again and earns some points from his anger. Back at home, Shu finds her sister with a heavy fever. To help her, he opens his interface to scout for some medicines, and finds some celestial fruits that he buys and gives to Xiao Yu, which instantly cure her fever. The next day, Shu returns to his school, where he learns that a new teacher, Zai Fei, would train the new awakened students at Dao Yu in class. As Zai Fei called out the awakeners, Shu recognized the teacher as he was one of the men in black. Among the awakened students in the class were Ka Qingxi, Liu Li, Li Qingyu, Yu and Ling Kai and Lu Xu. As Xu had a reputation of being a failure, the whole class was not expecting Xu to be an awakener. Following the names of awakeners, another awakener, Zhang Shuyi, joins the class. Seizing the opportunity, Yi Ling Ling gave up her seat for the newcomer as she was tired of sitting next to Xu. As Zhang took his seat next to Xu, right off the bat, 
Shu made fun of the dude's girly appearance by calling him gay as he wanted to grind out magic credit points. Time skipped to night. Shu follows his school's schedule and joins the Dao Yun class for awakened students. Upon reaching the class, Zai Fei asks Shu about sodium but since Shu's only two brain cells were busy fighting with each other, Shu tells the teacher that sodium is the road to heaven. Regretting his decision, the teacher tells Shu to sit down whereas Shu makes a degenerate face since he was happy getting points from the teacher's disappointment. The teacher then explains that the sodium-potassium alloy, when in contact with an awakener's blood, reveals the rank by the saturation of the color black. The darker the sodium-potassium alloy got, the stronger the rank of the user was considered to be as ranks were distributed from A being the strongest and F being the weakest. After class, Liu Li and his group of friends mock Shu since he was of F rank, the rank that was the lowest amongst all. To respond to their roasts, Shu messages them through Chinese Discord and calls them fatherless which triggers all of them and increases Shu's magic credit. After reaching home, Shu is able to max out his celestial fruit which makes the fruit now accessible on his shop menu instead of the spinning wheel of fortune. In place of the celestial fruit, stinky tofus were now available on the spinning wheel of fortune. To get something good, Shu keeps on spinning his wheel of fortune and he keeps on piling up stinky tofu until he finally does get a unique item from the wheel. From the spin, appeared an enchanted paper which instantly gets absorbed into Xiao Yu's soul, awakening powers also in the process, as she entered her own celestial map. At night, as Shu got to sleep, Shu wondered how he would take care of the enormous amount of stinky tofu, and while he was wondering, he got a brilliant idea. In order to make cash, Shu thought of selling the stinky tofu and hence, the next day Shu leaves his home with a bag full of stinky tofu. After waking up early, on his way to his stall, Shu encounters an old man named Li who is practicing his sword skills with elegance. To act respectfully, old man Li asks Shu to join under his training but Shu, being the illiterate fatherless boy he was, bluntly rejects the old man and moves on. Upon reaching his stall, Shu is able to generate his magic credit points and real-life cash simultaneously since the smell generated him magic credits and his customers who wanted the stinky tofu gave him money for it. Since the tofu were truly delicious, word spread out and Shu's stall slowly gained popularity. After selling off all of his tofus, Shu starts to get confident as he starts to grind gaining magic credits and speed runs through his celestial map. After the heavy grind, Shu is finally able to summon a holy fruit which, upon eating, teleports Shu to his celestial map. Upon entering his celestial map, Shu starts to hear the twinkle star lullaby once again as he had completed his first layer of nebula. Using the branch-like symbol on his hand, Shu points his hand towards the layer of nebula which grants him a purple celestial dagger named the Corpse Dog. The next day at school, Zai Fei introduces the class with spirit stones as he uses one on Liu Li and demonstrates how to use one. Apparently spirit stones were used for magic power cultivation and since the stone itself had a lot of power, it helped training awakened magic. After receiving one for himself, Shu takes the stone in order to practice controlling his sword but he fails to do so. The next day, Shu once again leaves home early and encounters Old Man Li practicing his swordsman skills. Seeing Shu, Old Man Li again started to ask Shu if he was interested in learning martial arts but Shu, confusing martial arts with martial law from Tekken, decides to once again completely ignore him. At school, Liu Li defeats every one of his classmates in arm wrestling and hence he gets overconfident and challenges loser Shu. Unexpected to Liu in the classroom, Shu completely outmogs Liu by defeating him with both his left and right hand, forcing Liu to leave out of embarrassment. To continue to get into Liu Li's mind, Shu takes the stinky tofu to the school cafeteria and opens it up in order to grind out negative emotions evoked by its smell. Annoyed by Shu chasing him around, Liu Li takes his friends someplace far away whereas Zhang, after sitting next to Shu, reveals to Shu that their teacher, Zai Fei, belonged to a class called the Earth Network where all of the other men in black also belonged to. Moreover, he reveals that above this class is the Heavenly Network which only had a few members in it. At night, some men in black jump over houses in Shu's neighborhood which alerts Shu since he had already encountered something like this in the past. Spying from afar, Shu sees the leader of the group, who looked exactly like Eren Yeager, revealing that he was of the Heavenly Network and he was there to meet up with Old Man Li. After entering the old man's house, Eren Yeager asked the old man Li to help him with the war by joining the Heavenly Network, but old man Li refused his offer leaving Eren Yeager to do nothing but return back. After seeing the Heavenly Network being affiliated with Old Man Li, Shu decides to join Old Man Li's martial arts training the next day but being a master at making others dislike him. Shu also leaves the task to teach Xiaoyu science to Old Man Li. 
The next day, Shu is in class when he notices his credits go up astronomically all due to Xiao Yu. On his way back home, Shu notices that everyone was amazed by Ka King Shi as her abilities met the qualifications of rank A and was the only one that had progressed so much in the Dao Yuan class. Outside his home, he finds his sister trying to anger the old man. Shu's celestial map was very similar to Xiao Yu's hence the negative emotions she evoked was also increasing his credits. Old man Li asks Shu to fulfill his promise and start training under him. As Shu was awakened, he was easily able to pass the first training challenge by lifting a 300-pound vest with ease. Seeing that he was somewhat skilled, Old Man Lee uses a sheet of paper to show the next technique he would teach. Using the paper, Old Man Lee cuts the ground in front by focusing his energy to the edge of the paper. Old Man Lee advises Shu to master one technique and not be a jack of all trades when he can be a master of one. He then passes Shu a rusted sword and instructs him to cut the air. As Shu follows his instructions, Old Man Lee corrects many imperfections in his form. After investing many hours in the training, Shu begins to hone his skill. At night, Old Man Lee asks Shu's motivations for being strong. Shu, who did not have a grandiose goal of helping others, wanted to just be thankful to live his life peacefully as his life had not been an easy one. Hearing this, Old Man Lee agrees to continue teaching Shu but only in exchange for a favor later. The next day, Old Man Lee starts to get used to teaching Xiao Yu despite the rough start. As he is teaching her, one of the heads of the Heavenly Network, Shi Zujin shows up, requesting an audience with him. Xiao Yu, who was a slow learner, greets Shi Zujin the incorrect way despite Old Man Lee's teachings. Shu, who was at school, earns credits for Shi Zujin's anger as Xiao Yu greeted him rudely. Surprised, Shu rushes to his home as he realizes that one of the heads of the Heavenly Network was outside his home. Shu arrives to find Shi Zujin asking Old Man Lee for a favor. Shi Zujin informs him about the reappearance of the ruins and asks him to join the Heavenly Network to fill a vacant position. This would lead to the joining of forces between the Golden Foundation, who Old Man Lee was a director of, and the Heavenly Network. However, Old Man Lee refuses to join the Heavenly Network and sends him away. After Shi Zujin leaves, Shu inquires Old Man Lee about the meeting. Old Man Lee brushes off his concerns. Moreover, Old Man Lee had not informed anyone about undertaking Shu as a student, hence keeping Shu as a secret disciple. Old Man Lee then hands Shu two sodium, potassium alloy vials to Shu, instructing him to check his and Xiao Yu's levels. At night, Shu nervously takes the test, only for it to turn positive. Just kidding, it instead took a mysterious color that did not match any of the ranks but rather matched his celestial map. Shu tries to hide the result from Old Man Lee and lies by saying that he was still stagnant on rank F that night. Shu begins reciting Twinkle Twinkle which allows him to connect with his celestial map once again and overcome the second layer of the nebula. He gains a new power that protects him from any injuries. Meanwhile, Xiao Yu overcomes her first layer of nebula, gaining the ability to reconstruct dead things by sucking their life force into a black hole and making them follow her command. Just like the ant which Xiao Yu had that died yesterday but was regenerated and now followed her orders. Xiao Yu tries to regenerate another ant, but is unable to retain the last one, hence making her realize that she can use her powers on one thing at a time. Xu instructs her to try her power on a larger organism, like a pig. Xiao Yu complies and tries to reconstruct a dead pig from the local slaughterhouse. Xu finds the pig to be the exact replica of the original, and decides to use his celestial dagger, Corpse Dog, on it. As his corpse dog had an energy source, the pig evaporated immediately on contact with his sword. As a compensation for her destroying her pig, Xu prepares scrambled eggs for Xiao Yu. However, he soon senses danger nearby and prepares to head out. As she was now also awakened, Xiao Yu also senses danger and tags along Shu, promising to not be reckless. They both hop over houses to reach the bridge where the fight was taking place. Shu notices his teacher, Zai Fei, in the battle. Zai Fei deflects the fire attacks of the enemy by ease. The D rank muscle of the enemy group jumps to close quarters to Zai Fei, who runs away to avoid a devastating blow. At a safe distance, Zai Fei snaps his fingers to ignite the enemy members. However, the enemies survive the attack and take their leave when they hear the police approach the scene. The enemy team takes cover inside an abandoned building, so the police and the Heavenly Network members surround it. The muscle of the enemy trio asks his teammates to run away to Mang Mountain while he distracted the cops. Being the one guy that always carries his noob teammates, the muscle man escapes from the guards with each teammate on one hand. Shu notices them running away and follows them by jumping buildings. However, he does not get far as one of the Heavenly Network members impale him using his blood powers. Zai Fei arrives at the scene and spots Shun who was overseeing the incident. 
Believing him to be an enemy partner, Xiaofei instructs his teammates to give chase to Shu. The subordinates of the Muscle Man die during the encounter. While a huge fight erupts, Shu and the Muscle Man are able to subdue all of the Heavenly Network members. With everyone else dealt with, the Muscle Man turns over to defeat Shu, but soon realizes that he had made a grave mistake as Shu rips the bones in his arm apart using Corpse Dog. As everyone was unconscious, Shu took his leave and returned back home. There he finds Xiao Yu who is relieved to see him come back home unscathed. Shu takes her outside so they could visit the late night eateries on Tianfu Street. Before they try to go there, Shu instructs Xiao Yu to use her resurrected crow to scout the area within a kilometer's radius to look out for danger. After scouting the area, Xiao Yu informs Shu that the coast was clear. Shu heads to the place where he had previously fought the Heavenly Network. Knowing that the enemies had died there, he asks Xiao Yu to sense the dead energy around them. Xiao Yu finds the dead energy of the three enemies from before. On Shu's instructions, Xiao Yu absorbs the dead energy of the Muscle Man but is unable to summon him as she has insufficient power. Xiao Yu informs Shu that she would need a day's worth of energy to be able to summon him. Shu and Xiao Yu then head to the eateries on Tianfu Street, where Shu looks at Xiao Yu while she ate like there was no tomorrow. Seeing her never-ending appetite, Shu believes that he made a great mistake by picking Xiao Yu from the orphanage. Unable to take a joke, Xiao Yu begins to cry as she believes that Shu wanted to send her back to the orphanage. Seeing her cry, Shu remembers the past memories they shared together. From selling on the streets to renting a small house, Xiao Yu had been there for Shu through thick and thin. Emotional, Shu reassures Xiao Yu that he would be at her side and will work his way up to buying his own house. Somewhere else, the members of the Heavenly Network overview the fight between the Muscle Man and the Heavenly Network. Using the local cameras, they are able to pick up on Shu but are unable to identify him. Predicting that he was a Rank C Renjaeger believes that the Rank C's sudden appearance should be investigated. Changing to another topic, Fatty informs the Heavenly Network about the next ruin that would be opening in Luo City, which was the same city where Shu resided. The next day, Shu begins his business of selling stinky tofu as usual. However, since his food had gained a lot of traction, his supply of stinky tofu was running thin. The people are angry at being unable to buy more stinky tofu. Shu realizes that he can farm more credits through their anger and begins to prank people by bringing up their expectations only to disappoint them by informing them about his finished stock. At night, Xiao Yu is able to summon the muscle man she had absorbed earlier. Amazed by her abilities, Xu warns her to keep her powers hidden from the public. Xiao Yu reassures him and instead tells him that she could also see the fragments of the muscle man's memories. Due to this ability, she was able to know the location where the muscle man hid a stash of money hours before his death. Xiao Yu insists that they take that stash, but Xu begins to act like a stuck-up good boy as he wanted to buy his house using his own hard-earned money. The next day, the fatty enters Shu's school and introduces himself as Li Yixiao, the new director of the school. Shu senses that he was rank B and realized that he was from the Heavenly Network. Fatty, along with Xi Fai, conduct the Dao Yuan class and prepare the students to become competent enough to enlist with the Heavenly Network. Moreover, they instruct the students to put the spirit stones provided by the Heavenly Network to good use such as cultivation of their powers, allowing them to level up. Fatty informs the students about the Muscle Man and his buddies who had previously fought with the Heavenly Network, and warns the students about the suspicious C-rank person who had defeated the Muscle Man. After class, Shu, who was aware of his advanced skills, tries to trade his spirit stone for money. Jiang Shui, due to his connections, hooks up Shu with a third party who was willing to buy the spirit stones for 240,000 yuan. Shu brimmed with happiness and imagined his rags to riches fantasy. Back at home, Old Man Li teaches Xiao Yu when he is approached by Fatty from the Heavenly Network. Xiao Yu spares no chance to show what a dumb she is as she greets Fatty by calling him Porky despite Old Man Li's teachings. Fatty informs Old Man Li about the skeletons that were alive on the northern mountains, which were probably ranky they had come to life due to the ruins opening up near that place. Old Man Li informs him that the Golden Foundation had no interest in such matter, hence he should take his leave. Before he took his leave, Fatty informed Old Man Li about the Rank C that was lurking nearby, who had previously defeated the Muscle Man. That Rank C was supposedly well versed with the sword, which draws Old Man Li's concerns. Shortly after the fatty's leave, Shu reached his home and showed Xiao Yu the new mobile phone that he had bought for her. Moreover, Shu tells her that he had money to buy the home but he would still need to work as a food vendor to pay for utilities, even though the real reason was that he wanted to gain credits by angering people by his pranks. Emotional, Xiao Yu hugs Shu. The next day, Shu stands at his stall like usual only to be approached by Fatty. 
Fatty recognizes Shu from the Dao Yuan class and hence tries to take one tofu bowl for free. The old vendor nearby notices Fatty and calls him a predator of young orphan kids. Scared jealous, Fatty decides to pay Shu and makes him his buddy. Later that day, Shu suddenly receives a call from Fatty, asking Shu to hurry to the Dao Yuan class as their classmates were leaving to head to the ruins. As he would be gone for a while, Shu messages Xiao Yu about his departure and tells her to not worry. At night, Shu and the students of Dao Yuan are transported to the ruins in heavy military-grade buses. Inside the car, Shu asks Jiang about the ruins to which Jiang reveals that the ruins was a place which was left behind by an out-of-world species. Adding on, Jiang reveals that the ruins contained a so-called thing called the Formation Eye which was the most important thing within the ruins since the ruins vanished after its extraction, making it a very sought-after item. After the boring car ride, the students of Dao Yuan finally reach a camp near the ruin, and they all meet up with Xi Fai who reminds them about the confidentiality of their mission. To kick off their mission, Xi Fai tells the students to first eat and then take their sleepy asses back to their respective tents to sleep for the day. Following Xi Fai's orders, Xu takes his food tray and sits next to Jiang. But before he could feast, he is interrupted by an arrogant Discord mod who demands in a star service and annoys everyone eating. Unable to control his anger, Shu spanks the arrogant fatso off the chair which causes him to go unconscious. Impressed by Shu, everyone around feels godlike satisfaction as the fatso is taken to the nurse tent. After eating, everyone from the Dao Yuan practiced in tents since there was concentrated spiritual aroma around the ruins. Embarrassed to sing the twinkle twinkle lullaby, Shu doesn't practice but instead he decides to grind out his magic credit points by disturbing Liu Li who was trying to practice in peace. Calling him Baka again and again, Shu is finally able to disrupt Liu Li's inner peace as Liu finally breaks and starts to have a mental breakdown. The next day, during breakfast, the chef pours Shu more food portions since he took care of Fatso. Moreover, the guard whose seat was taken by the Fatso the other day, gives Shu his seat but since Jiang was eating on the ground, Shu thanks the guard for his kindness and refuses to sit on the seat. At night, Shu once again decides to grind out his magic credits as he once again appears behind Liu Li and disturbs him. Poor Liu makes a run for his life but sadly Shu once again catches up to him and continues to disturb him which literally makes Liu Li cry. The next day, finding someplace discreet, Shu decides to practice and he gains a stronger armor during his time in his celestial map. The same armor was used by his dad but due to some issues he was born. Shortly after, Shu heads out to the cafeteria to get lunch but he gets interrupted by Liu Li who challenges him to a hand wrestling rematch. With nothing better to do, Xi Fai also joins them and a tent is set up for the huge crowd which was spectating them to arm wrestle. Having high expectations from Liu Li this time, everyone is once again let down as Xu easily 2 owes Liu Li. Impressed by Xu's skill, Xi Fei also challenges Xu and he too gets humbled by our arm wrestling champion, Xu. Following the arm wrestling match, Xu meets up with Jiang and they both witness a mist appearing around the ruin. Instantly, Jiang recognizes the mist to be the portal, an opening to the ruin. Seeing the mist approach them, Xu and Jiang try to make a run for it but they inevitably get engulfed by the ruin's mist. After teleporting inside the ruin, Shu falls to the ground and finds himself against an undead axe wielder that begins to attack him. Being a student of Old Manly, Shu is able to decapitate the undead attacker using his martial arts but he immediately encounters more skeletal zombies appearing from the ground below. After running away from the zombies, Shu realizes that the zombies used to stop following their subject after a certain distance. After running for a while, Shu meets up with a group of awakened students who are running away from the zombies. To impress the baddie in the group, Shu attacks and kills all of the zombies that were following them and as a parting gift, Shu leaves them with the axe that he had found from the previous zombie he had killed. At sunset, Shu decides to make way to the mountain so that he would be able to see the map around him. Nearby, Shu notices the corpse of the kind guy who offered him a chair before. Saddened, Shu strives to survive but on his way, he sees a signal flare. He decides to detract to see the source of it. Shu heads there to find a blonde guy who Shu was certain was not a Dao Yuan student. Apparently, the previous night, some spies had made their way near the ruins. The spy introduces himself as Chang Huan Yu. But Shu's interface tells him that the spy had numbers for a name. Shu uses this opportunity to mess with the spy, allowing him to gain a lot of credits. The spy tries to escape from Shu's tomfoolery, but Shu was not going to let his prey go out easily. As they run into the open, they suddenly realize that zombie skeletons were appearing from the ground. 
Shu pranks the spy and deserts him with the other emerging undead monsters. Against all odds, the spy survives from the undead monsters and rejoins Shu. The spy was angry at Shu, who deliberately acted like a coward. Shu proposes that they should rest somewhere, and the spy, having sinister plans in mind, agrees. At a safe site, Shu falls asleep, allowing the spy to make his move to kill Shu. While the spy creeped towards Shu, Shu woke up and scared the living hell out of the spy. Shu tells him that it was a prank and the spy checks for cameras around him. The next day, Shu excuses himself to a pee break, where he secretly orders many stinky tofu from his interface. Shu brings one bowl of stinky tofu to the spy, and tries to show it to the spy like he was a starving African boy. Being fed up, the spy attacks Shu, who is able to counter him. After a long duel, Shu kills the spy using the corpse dog. Shu is immediately guilt-struck as he begins to remember the fun he had pranking the spy, believing that his comedy film had now turned into a horror one. However, he soon comes to terms with himself as he realizes that he needed to kill and survive for Xiao Yu's sake. The next day, Shu reaches a less barren area with some fruit-bearing trees. Shu tries to get an apple from the tree, only to realize that Alvin and the chipmunks wanted the fruits for themselves. Being a menace to all lifeforms, Shu gains credits by angering the squirrels. Soon enough, the critters revolt, causing Shu to escape with the apples he had stolen. While running, Shu comes across a stream of water and he stops by to drink water. Suddenly, a wolf pack attacks him, forcing him to run away as the wolves give chase to him. However, his brokenness was becoming more evident as his shoes began to wear and tear. Having a drive to reach Xiao Yu alive, Shu runs barefoot and is soon able to outrun the wolves. He is also able to find a group of Dao Yuan students, along with the group of students he had met earlier. To farm some credits, Shu opens up his stash of apples in front of the starving students, and begins to eat the apples one by one. The girl in the group tries to seduce Shu to give her an apple, but Shu showed that he was no simp and ate the apple like a menace. Greedy for more, Shu begins to list delicious cuisines in front of the students, testing all of their patience. At night, Shu takes the axe from the defenseless students and begins to search for the Formation Eye while dual wielding his axe and sword. By finding the Formation Eye, he could open the ruins exit for everyone. With the axe and sword in his hands, Shu encounters a zombie but this zombie was different from the bunch since it had a horse and a spear as its weapon. After grabbing onto the zombie's spear, Shu discovers that zombies had emotions since the zombie added onto his magic credit score. After stealing the zombie's spear, Shu makes a run for it since the speared zombie was a part of a cavalry with a bunch of zombies following behind. After escaping from the zombie herd, Shu infused some of his magic into the spear which made the spear more flexible and fast. Meanwhile, the survivors from the Dao Yuan and the Heavenly Network look from afar at the zombie herd Shu fought with. Whilst looking for the leader, the Earth Network finds the zombie from whom Shu had stolen the spear from but, unbeknownst to them, they believe that the zombie with no spear was the leader since it was the only oddball with a sword instead of a spear in hand. After decapitating the poor zombie, the survivors immediately realize that they have made a mistake since the leader was another zombie hence they make a run for their lives. After running to someplace safe, the group of survivors notice the herd below them but it seemed that they had lost track of them. While looking at the herd below, a Dao Yuan student points out to Shu, who was near the herd and was planning to attack it. Seeing Shu from afar, the group is impressed after seeing him steal and escape with a spear from a zombie with ease. Back to Shu, Shu spends his time hiding on a tree after running away from the zombie herd and he reminisces about his time with Xiao Yu since it had been a while since he had last met her. After resting for a while, Shu starts to travel once again but he immediately after encounters the herd which this time, surrounds him. With no choice left, Shu is forced to put old man Li's training into action as he used his body flexibility, and finessed his mastery over the spear. After a display of pure athleticism, Shu is able to kill off the herd of zombies and he takes all of the dropped weapons with him. Following behind, the group of survivors stumble upon the bodies of the zombies which Shu was responsible for. Moreover, the group also finds out the core to the ruin as one of the Earth Network members alerted the group of the herd surrounding the core. After formulating a plan to enter the core, the group is assigned positions and they all prepared to ambush the herd. Meanwhile, Shu, after collecting all of the spears, sat someplace discreet in order to practice. As he sat down, Shu received a holy fruit which, upon eating, granted him even more strength as his third layer of nebula leveled up. Back to the group of survivors, the group initiated their plans and as they were about to ambush the herd, 
A flying spear decapitates a zombie and more spears follow one after the other. To look badass in front of the group of survivors, Shu appeared from nowhere and he soloed all of the zombies with his enormous stash of weapons. To help Shu, the group of survivors rush down to Shu's help but by the time they reach downhill, Shu already gets finished with killing all of the zombies. After organizing the pile of weapons in one place, Shu decides to use the big crowd of survivors and he starts trading weapons for expensive items. After getting a lot of hate, which boosted up his magic credits, Shu also started to get rich as many survivors were willing to give away their watches and accessories for a weapon. After making it to Forbes' richest people alive, Shu heads to the core of the ruins along with the group of survivors. Tired from walking for hours and hours, the group decided to take a break as the sun had gone down. Since the Heavenly Network survivors sacrificed themselves for the students, Shu empathizes with the starving Heavenly Network survivors and he gives them a piece of apple which replenished their hunger, thirst, and energy. Jealous, students demanded apples too but since Shu was greedy AF, Shu refused to hand them apples. To gain respect from the homies, a dude decides to buy an apple from Shu and he cuts the apple into small pieces so that he can hand it to every student. As he was cutting the apple, ghosts appeared from nowhere as they rushed towards them with murderous intent. Upon the sudden appearance of the ghost, everyone raised their weapons whereas Shu started to struggle with his celestial dagger, Corpse Dog which started to react violently to the ghosts. After sensing the power of the corpse dog, the ghosts feel terrified as they all flee away after getting scared by Shu's hidden demonic sword. Confused by what just happened, the group decided to continue their journey towards the core of the ruin since they all had replenished from the apple. On their way to the core, the group of survivors meet up with even more survivors who were rescued by Ka King Shi. Apparently, Ka King Shi was the only a ranker and she had rescued a lot of people as well as handed survivors swords dropped by the zombies. Unlike Ka King Shi, Shu capitalizes on the increase of the survivors group, and he once again sets up his stall and starts selling weapons. As Shu was selling off each of his weapons one by one, Shu gets called by the Heavenly Network. Upon meeting up with the survivors of the Heavenly Network, the representative of the surviving network, Zhang Yuteng tells him that he and Ka King Shi were stronger than the bunch and hence he tells Shu to stop selling more spears since he was more skilled with it. Following along, Zhang summons his own celestial sword called the Heart Blood Nourishing Sword and he uses it to check the depth of the hole which was the continuation to the ruin's core. After sending his sword down, Zhang determines that the hole was 100 meters deep and it also had another hole underneath. Since they couldn't continue their journey to the core just yet, they decided to hold on for a while. After a while, Shu starts to check out his magic credit score and during it, he discovers that there were nine spies that were present amongst the group of survivors. Unable to pinpoint the survivors, Shu ignores it for the time being and wonders where Jiang and Liu Lai were. Meanwhile, Fatty makes his appearance as he appears out of nowhere with a whole tree in his arms. Impressed, Shu commends Fatty's strength and he laughs when he sees the squirrel from before beefing with him. After a while, the apples from the trees are plucked and they are distributed amongst all of the survivors which leaves the squirrel helpless as he sees his apples getting taken from him. To calm the squirrel down, Shu hands the squirrel an apple from his pocket which makes the squirrel his friend. During all of this, Zhang appears out of nowhere and he shows off his weapons which he had obtained from killing a few zombies. Relieved, Shu handed Zhang a spear for free since he was his only friend but during their reunion, a dude with a red hat interrupts them and asks Shu for a spear. Recognizing the dude to be a spy, Shu refused to hand over the spear no matter what he offered. Annoyed, the spy with red hat moved on and joined his group of fellows. At night, when everyone was asleep, nine spies made their move as they all jumped into the 100 meter hole but as the red hat dude was about to jump into the hole, Shu pulled the dude back and told him to split their findings in the ruin. After agreeing with Shu, the red hat spy tries to jump down the hole once again but he again gets pulled out by Shu, who now at this point, was busting his balls. Annoyed, the spy finally uses his weapon and he swings it at Shu before throwing a self-blasting page at Shu. After completely dodging all of the spy's attacks, Shu alerts everyone about the spy's motive which causes Fatty to wake up and incinerate the spy to death. Realizing that there were more spies ahead, Fatty decides to continue their pursuit for the Formation Eye and he tells Zhang to take care of Dao Yuan students whilst he, along with Shu, Ka King Shi and the Heavenly Network, made their way through the hole. After being done with all preparation, Fatty orders one of the Heavenly Network members to form a stairway from the opening of the hole all the way to 100 meters below. Upon reaching the ground level, the group walk a few miles only to find all the seven remaining spies dead with blood dripping all over them. 
Blaming their deaths to be a mass suicide, Fatty continues to lead the group towards the Formation Eye and during their lookout for the it, he, along with the group, gets trapped inside a room with crystals on its ceiling. After getting trapped, ghosts emerge out of thin air, and they appear in an enormous amount. Being a rank B Awakener, Fatty uses his flaming tiger attack to take care of most of the ghosts, but to take care of the remaining. Every member of the group helped in taking down the remainder. During the takedown of ghosts, a member of the Heavenly Network gets his stomach pierced by a ghost that looked just like the spy they had just encountered. Seeing the spy's resemblance to the ghost, Shu immediately discovers that the spies had committed some kind of a suicidal ritual in order to grant the spy such a form. While figuring out how to kill the spy ghost, the group encounters another problem as a horde of zombies make their way to them through a castle that was right in front of them. Amongst the horde was the zombie king who had a spear so unique that it made Fatty believe that the spear the zombie king carried might be the formation eye. After exchanging blows with the zombie king, Fatty and zombie king lock into an intense battle whereas the group decides to help Fatty by taking care of the zombie cavalry. During the intense battle between humans and zombies, Shu decides to sneak into the castle as it seemed promising in terms of treasury and money. After making his way inside the castle, Shu gets attacked by the spy ghost but Shu, being able to predict the ghost's attack, easily is able to dodge and kill the spy ghost. Meanwhile, Fatty and the zombie king kept on exchanging and parrying each other's blows but finally after a while, Fatty is able to get a hold of the spear of the zombie king, which he thought to be the formation eye. After resisting for a while, the zombie king is finally able to fling Fatty away from the spear, and he uses this time to deal a blow on the Fatty's stomach. Meanwhile, reaching the center of the castle, Shu is ambushed by a terracotta army. However, the corpse dog emerged from Shu's chest, and the sheer presence of it made the terracotta army retrace their steps back to their stations. To make a quick buck, Shu steals all of the spears of the army men, and decides to sell it later. Meanwhile, Zai Fei, Fatty and all the other Heavenly Network members try to fend off the undead army. Ka King Shi does not spare a moment to show her best. I meant busted abilities, and shows her prowess by annihilating a group of undead soldiers in one swift move. During the fight, Fatty is attacked by the leader of the undead army, who had created many dragons using his power. Angered, Fatty breaks free of the dragons and grabs onto the leader's spear, only for the leader to run towards the castle as he sends Shu investigating a castle room. Fatty, who had believed that the spear was the Formation Eye, gives chase to the undead leader after realizing that the spear was not in fact the Formation Eye. The undead leader reaches the room which Shu was in, only to find that Fatty had caught up with him. He orders the stone guards, who are now spearless, to stall Fatty while he approaches Shu. Back to Shu, Shu investigates the room, only to find a riddle nearby. While trying to solve it, he encounters the undead leader who tries to stop him. However, Shu accidentally drops a box that was on the table, which leads to the breaking of the seal. The ruin begins to disappear, allowing everyone to return to the campsite from where they started. Everything begins to return back to normal as the injured are immediately tended to. In the midst of all of this, Zhang tries to look for Lu Xu and informs Zai Fei of Lu Xu's disappearance. Lu Li, thankful for Xu's help, tries to look for him, only for the Drip Lord, Lu Xu, to make his entrance while everyone was worried sick for him. As he had to check up on Xiao Yu, Xu quickly takes his money for the spears that he had gathered from the ruins and heads back home. On his way, he meets Xiao Yu, who was unhappy that Xu took so long. Xiao Yu breaks into tears after seeing Xu who had been gone for days. To make up to her, Xu Pinky promises to take her out for dinner the next day. At home, Xu asks Xiao Yu to summon the muscle man that she had previously summoned. After complying, Xu shows Xiao Yu two energy beads that he had formed during his time in the ruins. The black one was made by the energy absorbed by the undead monsters that Corpsedog had slashed and the colorful one was from the absorbed energy of dead humans. Shu feeds the black one to the muscle man, which increases the muscle man's power, but also produces a side effect that causes the muscle man to laugh hysterically. Shu also gives Xiao Yu the apples he had stolen when he was in the ruins. Xiao Yu loves it, but the squirrel that was perched on Shu's shoulder protests against her as she ate his apples without consent. Xiao Yu thinks that the squirrel was very cute and names it Little Fierce Shu. She immediately makes him her pet and she feeds him potato chips, which he immediately falls in love with. Later that night, Shu investigates the artifact that opened the seal within the ruins. He transfers his mind inside the artifact, only to find himself floating near the location where he previously camped. Shu realizes that he was able to control the surrounding aura, which was probably the reason that the undead leader wanted to keep such an artifact for himself. Shu returns back to his body, 
only to realize that the artifact had a circular pit on the bottom. Shu once again transfers his mind inside the pit at the bottom, only to find himself in an unknown place. Nearby, he finds his spears that he had collected in the ruins, and realizes that the place worked as a storage room. Shu then turns his gaze towards an enormous door that stood before him. Unable to pass through, Shu peeks towards the other end of the door and finds the landscape of the castle. Suddenly, he hears Xiao Yu calling his name, so he returns to his body. Xiao Yu was scared that Shu had died, but Shu calmed her down. He then shows her the valuable items that he had collected in his time within the ruins, which he would sell to earn a lot of money. He vows to stay with her and live the life that he had always imagined to have. Somewhere else, Shizujin meets with Eren Yeager while sharing his speculations. As the Heavenly Network had failed to get the Formation Eye this time, Shizujin speculated that the spies had taken the Formation Eye before them. Believing that more ruins would be opening up, the Heavenly Network prepares itself for a war between Heaven and Earth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care.